Hi everybody, I'm Shannon and I'm here with my partner Michael and we were just talking this morning actually about a scenario that Michael ran into with somebody that he knew uh, that we thought would be an interesting illustration for you guys today. We really have a lot of people who are confused and concerned about kind of the intersection of social security income and Medicare, what they mean to one another um, what they should expect and why some of these numbers are not really what they thought that they would be. So Michael, do you want to kind of outline what these folks problem was? Yeah, Shannon. Um, and, and it's interesting. We, we, uh, a year ago, we built a calculator that basically tries to forecast healthcare costs, uh, in retirement and compare it to social security. And what we find is that, uh, if so, if Medicare continues to increase, at the level, uh, the premiums can increase at the level that they have over uh, the next 20 to 30 years, there will be some individuals out there who may not even see a social security check. Uh, no more social security is, is kind of how we think of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it hadn't really seen too many stories or, or examples of older people uh, doing that. So I had a client that um, had been on their company plan. Uh, they were an executive, they were retired, but they were stayed on the company plan and finally had to, to come off of that plan. But they had turned 65 13 years ago uh, for the um, uh, owner of the company and then his spouse uh, 11 years ago, so two years difference. And what was, um, so a couple of scenarios came up and we'll kind of walk through the numbers I'll have Shannon go through those and then I'll talk a little bit about um, some of the surprises because the, the one thing uh, that this couple found is that they didn't understand any of this having been on this company plan mm -hmm. um, and they were really shocked by um, the costs that they ended up uh, incurring you know, at this later date, uh, whereas a lot of people sign up for Medicare when they're 65. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of go th through that and show you what this example looks like. And, and show you some of the gotchas that, that came up that we wanna make sure that you, those of you who are watching these videos, don't necessarily have this happen to you. That's right. So just a reminder for everybody, um, Medicare is intended for people ages 65 and older with a few exceptions. One of those exceptions being if you still work at a company that offers uh, group health insurance, then you don't have to take Medicare until later on. So yeah, I mean, this couple just kind of came to Michael and all of a sudden said, you know, our social security checks are looking a little bit smaller than they used to. Why is that? And so we're going to walk through the math today and illustrate why that is, what different parts of Medicare are actually taken from these folks' social security checks. So like Michael said, Dan's 78, Susan's 76. And last year, their monthly social security income for Dan, it was $1,594. And for Susan, it was um, $1,284. So the first thing we want to look at here is um, the federal and state tax. Um, and do you want to talk, Michael, about why that's important to kind of start with? Yeah, because the one thing that we always try to talk about is what are your actual dollars, right? We want to talk after tax dollars, not before tax. Now, a couple of caveats, and by the way, I, 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 I say they were retired. They were still on the board of directors, so that's why they had uh, coverage through the company. Right. Um, so, uh, because normally if you retire, you uh, automatically have to go on to Medicare. And they did have Medicare, but... Um, they had to sign up for, for new coverages, so that's where it got confusing. Um, but this company's done, or this couple has done well. So um, their modified adjusted gross income in uh, 2019 was about 350,000. So um, they they planned well. Um, they've re retired well, uh, but again, this is quite a shock to them. So when you talk taxes, first thing we look at is what's the marginal tax rate. Uh, we use marginal versus an average tax rate because that's really what you're paying taxes on when it comes to your Social Security. Because um, these, this couple makes over 44000 85% of their Social Security is taxable. So we basically took that 1594 for Dan and the 1284 for Susan. We reduced or we uh, multiplied that times 085 to come up with a number. And then we looked at what's the marginal tax rate for some for a couple who's making 350,000. And in 2020, that's 32%. They live in Colorado. The state tax is 4.65. Now, 
you know, this is not an exact science. We're just trying to give people an overview. Uh, we're not accountants. Your CPA would, would actually mm -hmm. be able to figure this out for you. But um, so in their case, uh, 497 is the combined tax that Dan is paying on his Social Security, and Susan would be paying $400 on hers. So now we're going to talk about Medicare and what the, the costs really look like for this couple. So as many of you may know, if you work a number of years throughout your life, Part A for Medicare is going to be free to you. Now, Part B is the real kicker. This $475 may look like a lot of money to you, and it is. And the reason is that Dan and Susan, because they have a higher income, they're paying more for Part B coverage than maybe your average person. They have the same coverage, but they pay more because they have a higher income. So that's why that 475 number looks really high, and that's just for one part of Medicare. Now, Part D has a base cost, which is what you'll see right, which is what this line is, but then there's also a penalty cost associated with Part D, and that's the $70 for each of them. That, that's, that's right, Shannon. And so, um, you know, normally if you make under 88000 or 176000 uh, as a couple, you don't pay any of the Part D penalties nor do you pay the Part B penalties. But because, again, their income, their modified adjusted gross income is uh, $350,000, they have to pay that additional seventy. And by the way, we're just, you know, we just gave you round numbers that it's uh, $70 and change. Um, so, you know, those are the two numbers. And they've been paying this previously because they had signed up for Medicare Part A and B uh, before, but um, it was something that they really kind of weren't putting all together. So uh, the gotcha that um, came up was with Medicare Part D, there's this requirement that you have credible drug coverage um, when you turn 65. And if you don't have credible coverage, then there's a penalty that starts at 1% a month of what they call the Medicare average premium and it, it goes up 1% a month uh, until such time as you would go on to Medicare Part D. Um, in their case, uh, Dan had been turned 65 13 years ago, as I mentioned, Susan 11 years ago. Well, they didn't have the piece of paper from their company that said we had credible drug coverage back 13 years ago and 11 years ago. So um, they bought a Medicare Part D plan. The cost of that for each of them was about $17. But when they uh, got premiums back from the company, the company said, well, you don't even have credible coverage. You didn't give us proof. So your real premium in this case is going to be $17 plus the penalty. So for Dan, it was a total of $66 a month. And for Susan, it was 58. Now, that's the gotcha, uh, and the gotcha is that when you turn 65, you want to make sure that you have that piece of paper from your company that says you have credible drug coverage. Companies give it to you, but of course, you know, this is 13 years ago. Who keeps some of that paperwork? Fortunately, we were able to uh, get that information for them. They've submitted an appeal, and hopefully uh, they'll get that number cut down or reduced from 66 to 17 and from 58 to 17. But we wanted to put that in there because it's a huge, I mean, it's not a huge number overall, but it was again, a surprise to them that why are we having to pay these higher costs? When in fact they did have that coverage, they just couldn't prove it. So, you know, when you get these statements, they can be really confusing. You don't know what you're looking at. So hopefully we'll get that fixed, but that's why we wanted to include it there. Yep. So on the last line, you're probably thinking, okay, we are, we're, we've already talked about all this money that you're paying for your Medicare coverage. Plan F. For the majority of people, plans, or excuse me, parts A, B, and D aren't going to be all the coverage that they need. You're going to need additional coverage outside of just hospital coverage you know, your preventative care doctor and your drugs. And so that's why most people choose some kind of supplemental plan. In this case, this couple chose plan F. 
so they could be covered really no matter what happens to them. And that's a, a big misconception in Medicare is that you just need the basics and you're covered. That's unfortunately not, not true. That's right. And so in their plan, and uh, for most people who are turning 65 today, Plan F has gone away. Uh, the government took that away. But because, again, they're older, they still qualify to be able to sign up for Plan F. Um, and as a matter of fact, they, uh, to avoid having to do any uh, health underwriting, they had to go with Plan F because in Colorado, at least, that's the only guarantee issue Medicare supplement plan. So they had to go with, with Plan F uh, at $285 for Dan and $253 for Susan because it was ba based on their ages. Right, so you start to see here why people are confused when they're getting these bills and or these statements and they're not really understanding what's going on. It's because it's complex. There's a lot of different parts to consider and they don't really make it simple for us to, to figure out. So for your average person, it's kind of tough. So when you total all of these things up, you have a grand total of 1,393 for Dan, $1,256 for Susan. And if you subtract that from their social security income, that's at the end of the day, their take home money that they're getting from social security. These numbers are crazy, but Dan is really only taking home after all those years, $201 a month. Now, if you think that's bad, Susan is only taking home $28 a month. So you start to see why this becomes problematic for people. We do a lot of these projections to try to help people understand what they should be expecting in the future. And we have people who get into their 70s, 80s, who all of a sudden we're saying, hey, at some point, you're not going to have any, any Social Security left. You're actually going to be writing a check to the Social Security Administration for your Medicare coverage. And they say, well, how can that be? Well, today, in 2021, you know, this is a reality for some people. So it starts to really come together and, uh, and make sense, you know, why, why we always talk about this being such a problem. And, and you know, we anticipate that this is only going to get worse. Um, you know, with what's happened with the pandemic, all of the spending that the government's uh, uh, done to try to keep the economy on track, as well as just the pure numbers. I mean, this is not a political statement. It's just the pure numbers of people who are going to be retiring are going to put a burden on the system. You know, in, in a number of our presentations, we use a graph that shows what the cost of the entitlement programs are, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. And at some point, um, not that this can happen without having to have higher taxes, but at some point, if we continue down the path we are today, they'll consume the entire federal budget. Yeah. Uh, well, we know that can't happen. So, um, you know, one of the things that we expect to happen if we had our crystal ball is that at some point, uh, Social Security will be means tested, just like Medicare is for right. those people who have higher incomes. Um, so, you know, again, we were really surprised by this. This is not something we had really done the math on um, for a, a client of, of this age. Mm -hmm. uh, they were obviously very surprised and, and very confused by it. So um, we thought it would be a good uh, example to bring to you to help you understand why it's important to plan ahead for these costs. Right, because unfortunately for Dan and Susan, like we said, there's something that we can maybe help them with with this penalty here. But for the most part, once you get to this age, there's nothing that you can really do at this point. Um, and so what we try to do is encourage people who are younger, who are, still have um, income and who can plan ahead to do everything that you can to try to save up dollars that you can spend tax-free on retirement health care. Um, and so um, a lot of what we do is help people 
think about what kind of strategies might work best for them. It's something to be thinking about before you turn 65 for all those pre-retirees out there. And if you are closer to 65, you know, make sure you're talking to someone and you're really understanding what's happening um, before you end up like, like Dan and Susan here. Well, thanks for joining us here today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you liked our video, feel free to like it, subscribe to our channel so you know when we come out with new content. And if you'd like to become a client of ours, you can do so in the information in the description below our videos. Again, we're Shannon and Michael. We're with Healthcare Genius and we're always here to help.